Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. We are at Brushstrokes Art Studio in Tewksbury right now. I am Sandy Bova and this is my sidekick, Tracy Barchard. Um, welcome. So we are excited to tell you that we are teaming up with the Tewksbury Senior Center to offer you these uh, virtual paint classes. So this is a wonderful thing due to the COVID-19 and the quarantine. We're not able to do our typical paint parties, events, classes, paint nights. We usually do our paint nights at the local venues and we have fun. So this is a wonderful way to offer this to you at the um, safety of your homes, which is all important for us. So it's a way to send the enjoyment, the painting enjoyment, creativity, and mostly therapy, I think, to everyone, which we all need is important right now. So <laughs> painting therapy is huge and we both paint we and it. use yes. it. Yep. So uh, today we're going to be painting, I call this Tiptoe Through the Tulips. It's a beautiful painting. Tracy actually painted it. Yes. Um, so we're gonna, she's gonna talk to you about a little bit about the painting and then we're gonna go over and make sure you're all set, set up with your supplies. I believe some of you bought paint kits. Um, so we'll go over and make sure everyone has everything. Some of you may be viewing and did not purchase a paint kit set. Um, so we'll go over all the supplies, make sure you have what you need. But right now, Tracy, you can tell, talk about your painting a little bit, sure. and then we'll make sure everyone's ready to begin. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So um, as you can see, it is um, yellow tulips, but you will have the option, depending on what you feel in the mood to paint, we will go instruct that also, what different colors you'd like to paint the tulips. So yeah, so the painting is just dark blues and then fading into lighter colors at the bottom. Um, various colored greens to give you depth and dimension and in the front is the tulips. We are going to instruct this step by step so we will start with the background and then we'll do the grass and then we'll do the clouds and then the tulips. So that's kind of the breakdown of how we're going to be instructing this painting today. So don't panic. Um, it is easy and simple as long as it's broken down. Just go at your own pace um, and have fun and enjoy it and there's no mistakes in painting. Just enjoy and have a good time. Okay, so I'm back. So you, everyone should have their supplies ready. So the f number one thing I'm going to tell you is uh, you're using acrylic paints, I believe. They stain your clothes. This, my apron, it does not come off. Um, they do stain your clothes. So you want to make sure you put on your paint clothes, not your nice clothes, or uh, be covered in an apron. Okay, so that's to start, most important thing. Second of all, you want a cup. It doesn't have to be this big, full of water, okay? That's for your brushes. Solo cups work really well. Yep, a solo cup, anything to contain the water. Uh, you'll want paper towels or a rag, whatever you have handy. I believe you have brushes with the kit. If you do not, uh, try, if, you, if you're painting at home without, you didn't purchase the paint kit, um, we use four brushes, four different sizes. Any brush really works, but I feel like the most important thing for you is that you have a brush that's a larger size, not so much the stick, but the width of the bristles. So this is probably like, what, an inch, would you say? So probably, I'd say maybe, yeah. so that way, because if you're using, we're using 16 by 20 canvas. Um, if you're using a larger canvas, it's just much easier to cover it quicker. Um, so that's probably the most important thing with your brushes. Other than that, as long as you have a smaller detail size for the end, the very end, to do details, you should be good to go. Um, did I forget anything? Palette. Paper plates are the best, okay? This is our palette. So um, I think paper plates are easy. Everyone has them on hand. Um, I also use, I'll tell you, these are, do you recognize what this is? Uh, take home paint containers from the restaurants, which we're getting tons of those right now. So just collect them, they're perfect. And if you have two of them, I can't show you right now, but. Should be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> if you have two of them, if you cover it, it will save for a week to two weeks. Put an elastic band around it so you're good to go. So this is the best, it costs you nothing. But anyways, paper plate for now is fine. So colors. You don't have a, an array of colors, I don't believe. I believe you just have the primaries, which is the red, blue, yellow, white, and black. I don't think you have brown. We didn't include black because there's no black in this painting right now. Yes, but you should have, yeah, but you should have black yes, for other for paintings. Yes, paintings. Right, because I believe we're going to be doing a series of five different paintings. I believe they'll be monthly. I'll, I'll tell you if that's incorrect, but as of now, that's what I believe. Um, 
So we're going to show you which colors to mix to make other colors with just using the primary colors. So make sure you have red, blue, yellow, and white, and we don't need black for this. No, nope, we don't. So we're this. going to try to even make brown out of the primaries, which might be a little challenging, but I think we can do it. Um, I got over all, went over all the supplies. Yeah. So, okay. So if you're, we're ready to start painting, I believe. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start with the sky, um, painting with the sky. So you want to grab your largest brush, okay, and have your rag and your water. So I'm going to get on. You get on size. that, yeah. and I'm going to step away for a little bit. Okay, so to start, we are going to put our brush in water, soften the bristles, dry it on our rag, and we are going to work our way down from the top. So this, uh, the grass begins, I would say, a little bit lower than the halfway point. So it's not quite, this is the halfway point, I'd say, of the canvas. We're going to go a little bit lower. So if you put mar a little bit of blue on your brush, just the corner of it, just so we can mark the spot. Sandy, did you remember to put some um, water on your brush to make sure that you loosen up the bristles a little I bit? I did, yes. Perfect. That's yes. a little tip. Okay, so halfway down is about right here. I'm going to go just a little bit lower, and I'm going to mark a dot. And then I might as well just drag that line right across. So we're doing this nice and light. We don't want it too dark. It's just to show you how far down we're going with the sky. OK, so then I'm going to take some blue on my brush. We're going to start at the top. Nice, smooth strokes, left to right. And we're going to cover the canvas and work our way down. Yay, nice and smooth. So we're not going to go all the way down with the straight on dark blue. We're going to slowly introduce, I think, a little bit of white. Tracy, am I uh, yes. pulling the green into this? Um, nope. We're just going to add some more white as you go gradually, like an okay. ombre effect. OK. So I'm going to go probably a quarter of the way down before I start to touch the white and add the white to it. So a lot of paint on the brush will help smooth the canvas. Sometimes it's hard to cover the canvas. Also, a tiny bit of water also is a trick that will help spread your paint better. So if you're having trouble, I don't know what kind of paints you have, um, but if they're thicker and you're having trouble covering or getting them to spread, you can add a tiny bit of water to the brush. Not too much. You don't want it to be drippy. Okay, so I'm about a quarter of the way down. So I'm going to start to add a tiny bit of white. Do not add a lot. A little is best. You'll know if you need a little more as you go down. But start with very little white. So I have blue on my brush and a tiny bit of white. OK, so now I'm pulling down. We don't want this to be too white. Why? Because we have to be able to see the clouds in front of it. So don't use too much white. We're just kind of softening the blue, blending it out. Tracy, I almost want to add a little green, no? You want to add a little bit of I white? I do. I want to add a tiny bit of green, I feel like, to this at the bottom, no? It's, Do you, you have green you mixed want. in that already? I can. Yeah. Let's. So I'm gonna try a little something different just to give this teal effect at the bottom. I'm just gonna try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't. Can I have that green? Thing? Okay. I just wasn't wanting to okay. get in you the middle of the camera. <laughs> I think we can walk through the camera. We're just getting used to this. <laughs> it's all dried out. And let me see it. It'll, there you go. If I get wet. There you go. All right. So. I mixed a little green. You don't have to do this. Um, I'm just trying it. I'll let you know if it's working. How do you mix green? Well, you mix green with yellow and blue, OK? If you add more yellow, you get a brighter, lighter green. Does that make sense, brighter, lighter? You get a brilliant, more of a. More yellow is going to give you a brighter, lighter, yes, yeah, green. Brighter, light and green. darker is going to be a more. Less yellow will give you a darker green, yeah. right? So we want the lighter. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow on my brush, and I'll show you in this. So we're doing yellow and blue, we're mixing, and we're getting a green color. So I'm just going to try it and see if I like it. OK, so now we're mixing green. Just remember kindergarten when you're mixing your colors. Yep. And I can always touch the water, not drippy, but just a little to help spread. And let me add some white to it. So I just want to see if I like this. I like to play with the colors. 
especially for the sky or a sunset. So I'm blending it out with my white. And remember, we don't want too much white because we have to make sure we see the clouds on, over it. As you see, if you add more water, it helps blend. Yep. Definitely. A lot of people struggle with the blending part of it, and they make it look, I always call it stripey, where it looks like there's a bunch of lines. So you can play with this. You don't have to do this. I like it. Um, play with it. Just remember, don't go too white because you still have to see your clouds. Um, and then just play with the blue and the greens, I guess. So again, the green is mixing the blue with the yellow. And I'm using a lot of water to get coverage. I'm kind of wetting my brush. I'd add a little and more white near the, the bottom, canvas. possibly, just okay. because if you notice, there's the darker of where the grass is. So to see how it's a lot lighter at the bottom, I would maybe add a little bit more white at the bottom. Okay. So you have the contrast of the darker green. Tracy likes to order me around. I do, yes. Sandy it's and I have okay. been hanging I together for seven I years together. <laughs> we have lots of fun stories. I'm sure you'll hear about them all in the next five episodes. <laughs> okay. Is that enough white, would you say, Trace? I think it's better. It's a little lighter, yes. Okay, so now should I do the grass, start the grass? Ah, uh, yes, you may. Okay, so now you have the sky. Kind of like an ombre, right? Yep. Okay. So now we will be ready to start the grass. So the grass, we already know how to mix green because I just taught you. So let's clean the brush off in the water and let's dry it on the paper towel or the rag. Hey Sandy, yes. did you know there's 150 species of tulips? I did not know that. Oh, and they come in multiple colors. 150 species? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I and love tulips. Three thousand different varieties. So we're actually going to paint this painting different color tul tulips because I've yet to do that. You said you have, I but have, I haven't. Yes. We, we, these paintings that you see, we've painted numerous times uh, for paint parties, etc. But um, so we know them like the back of our hands and <laughs> change them around. But I've yet to paint that with different colors. Okay, so I'm mixing green. So let's mix a lot of it here. So I got a lot of blue, a lot of yellow. So there's a nice green. And we're gonna stay on the darker side, correct? For yes, that? darker side, and yep. then we'll add some lighter into it. I'm asking Tracy, because this is her master painting. All right, and I'm going upstrokes? Yes. Okay, upstrokes. so now we're gonna do the grass upstrokes. So I'm taking my wide brush, I mixed a nice green on the darker side, which means I used a little bit less yellow. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to want the lighter green for the stems, maybe, or the front. Yep, and you want to go right up over your line. Right up over the edge. Yep, like, and make it so it isn't all even. You want it to be like Grassy. grass that has not okay. been finely cut. Yes, Yay, exactly. it's grass not finely cut. It's not a golf course grass. Okay. Okay. Let's make some more of this. So you want a lot of paint on the brush so it covers the canvas. And we want to make sure we don't go too high. Right, Trace, not too high. No, so you just want to overlap the just right over the, the horizon line, line a little bit. Yep. Sandy, do you know what it means if you get um, someone white tulips? I feel like it means I'm sorry. Yes, it oh. does. <laughs> I got that one right. Tracy has the tulip trivia to entertain you while we paint. She's always full of ideas. <laughs> so I did not know that white tulips is a yeah. gesture of uh, You're apology. Sorry. Yep. I don't need to give any white tulips I, right now, yeah, do I? You're okay, going to by the end. Okay. <laughs> you're definitely going to by the end. <laughs> I think we're going to have to give it to the camera cursor. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm almost to the end here. Am I covered enough, Trace? Yes, I believe so. 
so I don't want to leave too much yellow, right? I don't want yellow to show. And um, it's okay if you, uh, you know, as you go, because if you look at the actual painting itself, it does have the lights and greens in the painting. So even as you're mixing it, you're always not going to get the exact same color. So it's kind of nice because it gives it more dimension and semi and very flat color. You're going to see those different various shades. Yep. Yay, I did it. Okay. So you should have something like this. So if you're not keeping up or ever you, you're not able to keep up for whatever reason or you're a little slower or something happens at home, you should be able, again, I'll let you know when I know for sure, but I believe this will be aired twice a week. I think it's Monday and Thursday. Um, so you can always catch it another time through the week or I think it's going to be every week for the month. I think it's Monday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 2 p.m. but I'll let you know for sure when I know that. Um, so that way if you do um, uh, get stuck I guess you can put it away and then pull it out again then to finish. That looks beautiful, Sandy. Okay, so we're going to have dry time? Uh, um, no, nope, you're going to do, the, do clouds. the clouds. So Tracy's going to swap off with me because she's the master of the clouds. We, uh, we tweak hope so. each other's painting. <laughs> some of us are better at some things than others. So we you, you, utilize each other. Okay, so here you are, Tracy. You need paper towel, correct? I do, right you here. You got it? Okay. Yep. All righty. All righty. Hello, everyone. So we are going to do these clouds. They're going to look similar to these clouds, but not identical to them. And I always tell people that too. I, each time I paint, the clouds don't come out exactly the same way every single time. You're your own person. You're going to paint very differently than I do. And that's okay. That's what makes everyone unique and um, has wonderful different paintings. So I do have paper towel I'm going to use. You can use a rag also, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of map out where my clouds are going to go. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to kind of make them soften here at the bottom. So as you see up here, this is a lot darker and then they get lighter as they go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush. It's a pointy type brush. If you don't have a pointy brush, that's okay. So I take my pointy brush. I'm going to take my white. I'm going to use my side of my plate or whatever container you have, wipe it off a little bit. So here you go. And then what I'm going to do is I always say bump, bump, bump whenever I teach. So I'm just going to kind of go here and go bump, bump, bump. Okay, it's not right in a row like the birds used to make when you were a little kid. It's kind of this effect, bump, bump, bump. And then what I do is I take a little bit of water on my paper towel and I just kind of lightly blend a little bit there. You can even dip your paper towel in your white a little bit too. And it gives a kind of a nice soft effect. So same thing, once again, you can take your brush, dip it in your white, I wipe it off a little bit, and then I'm just gonna do another cloud where it kind of go bump, bump, bump. And as you can see, the background is actually still a little wet. Don't panic about that because you want it to have kind of a um, see-through type of effect. You know, unless it's a storm cloud, but we don't have storm clouds today with our pretty little tulips. And then I could even add a little bit of white here. So it's just very, very light. A lot of mistakes that people end up making is they do way too much. And so I just, like I said, I do like a rounded motion here, back and forth. And then you can also go back and play around with them. I could do a little one up here. It's always up to you what you want to do. Some people do struggle with this, but it just takes a little bit of practice and time. And as you see, you can just kind of fluff it a little bit here, okay? So if there is an issue, you do have a problem, oh my gosh, I don't like that cloud, I'm not sure about it, you could always go back and take your paper towel. This is a nice little eraser that you have. If you don't like it, and I'm just going to show you this so you don't have to panic and think, you can just wipe it off lightly here, okay? And I'm just showing you this because a lot of times when we do teach our classes, people get worried and nervous that, oh my goodness, I made a mistake, I, you know, I can't fix it. You can just wipe it off. Acrylics are very, very forgiving, okay? As you can see, it wasn't dry completely yet, but I can just go back in to show you and do the cloud again. You do not want to add a lot of paint, not paint, sorry, water to your brush because it will end up 
being all leaky and can drip down your painting. So that's kind of how you make clouds. So pretty easy like to do. So it's circular. So it is a circular motion. Yeah. So as you imprinted. see, um, yeah. So it's kind of just quickly, like lightly. You're not pushing really hard, just lightly. So you kind of can just lightly brush that. You know, you can do. I'll just show you another one down here. So same thing. I'm doing light effects here, and then once again here. Beautiful. So everyone's will be a little bit different. You can do many, many as, as you want or as little as you want. Um, definitely the background was a little bit wetter, so you may want to let that dry a little bit. Um, could have been uh, if you have too much water or if it is a little, you can always touch it too to see if it's a little bit wet and tacky that way. So we're going to take a brief moment and we'll come back and we're going to show you guys how to do the tulips. again so uh, we had a little bit of uh, time to dry for the painting to dry not too long acrylics dry pretty quickly um, I'd say you don't even need 10 minutes sometimes but um, everyone's different maybe even the temperature of the room that you're in um, so now we're going to start the tulips yay the fun part um, so we're gonna start the tulips they're little random cup shapes um, and what brush do we use well that's a good question <laughs> I'm gonna use pointy. I know your brush is not exactly like mine, but it's a bit of a medium pointy size. You can try any brush that's comfortable for you. I guess the most important thing is do not use a brush that's too big. It won't work, okay? Um, so I'm gonna use my pointy brush. I call it pointy. So we are going to start with white paint. Even though our tulips are gonna be different colors, we're gonna paint them all white for a base and then we'll add the color over it. Um, and sometimes the white mixes with it and it makes it really beautiful. So um, let's start with white. So I'm gonna dip my brush in white and I'm basically going to map out the shape. So another important thing to tell you before we start this is there's a space under the tulips. You do not wanna bring them down too far, okay? I say to be safe four fingers. So if you put your hand here, you can measure four fingers, four fingers. Okay, some of them might be three like that one, but safest to start four fingers down. So don't bring tulips any lower than that. Okay, have a four finger space at the bottom. So um, they also uh, fall above your green line too, some of them. Okay, so these are just random shapes and I guess I can describe them, Tracy, as what, a cup shape? Like a U. She looks like start she's drawing the U, the, U, yeah. the letter U. Actually, yeah, a U and then we'll fill it in. Yep. So then I just loosely fill it in. It doesn't yep. have to be dark. We just want a nice light white base. And if you notice, you want it loosely like she's doing and it's jagged at the top because tulips are jagged like that at the top anyways. You don't want to just cap them right off straight across. Yep. So um, you can make that, that a tulip later. right there. I'll get that off later. I think it's a little low. That's okay. That's okay. That's so, a um, tulip. Yep. So these are at different angles. They don't have to be straight on. Don't get too crazy with them. You do want them to be kind of uniformed, but they'll be tipped uh, to left and right maybe a little. So there's my second one. Should I should we be keeping them close together as we paint? You can them have across? some close together. You can have some if you notice. I'm going to do bunches. them close together because okay. then I'm afraid if I leave spaces, then I won't have. I'll have a dead space and not big enough for a tulip. Okay. I guess it could be overlapped though, but um, whatever. So just start to fill in. 
Keep them similar to the same size, but slightly smaller and bigger. So my green's still a little wet, which is fine. It's not too bad. I'm seeing it come through, but that's okay. You just don't want it to be really wet. Okay, so how's your tulips coming, everybody? Are they tipping them at some angles, slight angles? How's my tulips, Trace? They look pretty good. Okay. They make some of them also smaller, Oh, did you bigger? know that tulips will actually angle towards the light? So a lot of yours looks like they're angling oh, towards the light. So you want to angle light. some towards the not light, too, just so they're uh -huh. all... <laughs> oh, God. They tend to aim towards the light. Yes, I, you notice that when they're in a vase on the table. Yeah, which is really kind of cool. <sighs> we did our hair today. <laughs> We haven't done it in a really long time. <laughs> um, so oh, so, so Sandy and I actually met um, almost eight years ago because um, she teaches um, kids classes here at the studio uh, right in Tewksbury in Germano Park, which is awesome. So before she actually had this space, I came over for a Girl Scout event. Um, so if you have a Girl Scout troop or whatever, um, they do Girl Scout patches and I met her then almost eight years ago with my daughter, who's now 13. And yeah. um, I looked at her because I was a stay-at-home mom and said, hey, do you maybe need some help painting every once in a while? It was an instant connection. <laughs> and now <laughs> almost eight years later, we're still here. Yeah, we've been inseparable ever since, fighting and bickering. And <laughs> People have asked us if we were sisters, um, and that would be a no. Um, Soul sisters. Yes. Nice job, Sandy. You're doing great. All right. So more, I think you need more? one, though. There's a little, like, hold. There's a couple, like, Right hold. here. Yeah. Yes. You could go a little was... lower if you need to okay. or higher or overlap. Yeah, there you go. So you can have as many tulips as you choose. Um, you could make them a little bigger if you want. I mean, definitely, as I, I just stated, they are mostly symmetrical. Um, but, it, you know, fill the space. And also start to think about what colors you might want your tulips to be. They do not have to be yellow. If you look at the example, they're yellow and there's a little bit of orange that's in that. So if you needed to um, get them to be orange, you'd have to mix the red and the yellow to add a little bit of orange in that. All right, so now it's time to add the color. Um, yep, yeah. so you could let it um, dry for maybe a moment or you could probably start with the one, if you remember which one you started yeah, with I painting. You could even leave a little bit of the white on your brush and use the same brush. And you could incorporate, if you want to do a pink one, you could just take the white and add a little bit of red and you get a pink tulip. Yep. Because okay. as we learned, there's tulips come in all types of colors. Okay, so here's my tulips. I'm going to start to add the color like Tracy suggested. I'm not cleaning white off my brush because I'm going right into the color that I want. But we do need to mix our color. So that's what you need. So maybe grab another brush. Grab any other brush because we're going to start to mix the colors. So I want some yellow, some pink, some purple, and orange. Yeah. Yep. So if you wanted to, so probably do the red and the um, blue to do the purple. Yep. So we'll, yeah. Okay. So uh, to make the pink, you're going to do red with white. To make purple, you're going to mix blue with red. Um, and to make orange, you're going to mix the red and yellow. So it's that simple. Um, variation, as you're mixing, you'll know if you need more of the lighter shade or more of the darker shade. That would be a preference. So I'm going to start with pink. So I'm going to use my red paint and a tiny bit of white. It's hard to keep your white clean, so you have to try your best. It's what I always tell everyone in my classes is try so hard. I call these paint puddles to keep your paint puddles clean with not getting other colors in them because then you don't have your clean white paint throughout the whole painting that you need. Okay, so now I have a nice pink shade. So I'll pick and choose which ones I want pink. I could even do red. So she's painting in an upward motion and she could also incorporate a little bit more red and then add streaks in there so they don't become flat. Yep, and why are we painting in an upward motion, Tracy? Because I, that's I the know, way the tulips grow? Yes, very Okay, good. good. That's the way the petals grow, so oh, that's yes. how so you, you want to paint, paint upward. upward. Excellent. So I'm taking a little red just to give it a shadow, okay? So you don't want it to be one flat color, so kind of play with your colors. Use more white, use more darker red. So there's that pink one. I'll make this one pink too. And you want to make sure you cover your whole little white um, shape there. Okay. You don't want to see that. 
But it's nice too if you dip the paintbrush in two different colors, whether it be the red and the white, or if you end up making some purple and white, you're getting different um, tones and it gives it more dimension. Instead of just painting it red, it's going to give it very flat. So you always want to add other colors to that. Yeah, so no, painting I feel like is very therapeutic. Um, both Sandy and I went to art school. She went for very different reasons than I did because you went for... I went for fashion, fashion illustration, illustration and then illustration, yeah. yeah. Yep. And I went for graphic design, so believe it or not, we're both not actual painters, but we love painting Yep. and enjoy it very much. But you'll also see, too, we paint very differently, so it's kind of neat, and we instruct differently. So yep. if you well, ever... Well, we help each other out. It's we do. Part, she, yeah. yeah she, what, I'm very detail oh, yes. tight, and she's very um, abstract-y. Yes. So, um, yeah, we use each other. <laughs> <laughs> I paint my whole painting, and I have her slide in and do my trees. <laughs> <laughs> and I do the little tiny buildings and windows oh, and yeah. people with yeah. them. <laughs> Because Sandy likes to paint little details yeah. in little dollhouses. Tracy gets mad at me and yells at me. It says, people can't do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People, people can't as do detailed that. As, yeah, I can't no. help it. I'm learning no. slowly. No. Keep, keep it more I variation. Know. Okay, so now I'm going to do my purple tulips. So I'm mixing my blue and my red. So let's see how much I want of each. And making a beautiful purple. Yay. So yeah, she's taking the blue and the red and then she's kind of just brushing it around to see. And then if you add a little bit of white, you could have it be a little, you know, um, lighter. Yep. Depending, but that's a really pretty nice dark purple. Yeah, it is. I you can even add a little bit of, I mean, it gives it nice dimension. You could add a little bit of white too for a highlight. So you'll want to experiment with your uh, mixing of your paints. Um, you, yeah, like traces, you can throw white in to make it a different. And don't get frustrated. I mean, if you find you, like a lot of times too, one thing that we haven't mentioned is make sure you step back and actually look at your painting because sometimes you're so close to it all the time, you just focus on what you don't like about it. Um, I've done that before too. I And if you don't have an easel, don't worry about an easel. I always, when I paint myself personally, I always use it on a flat table, but I always got to remember to either prop it up and look at it and step back and say, wait, I might need this, especially when you're adding all of the tulips. I would um, suggest, you know, kind of stepping back a little bit. I don't know if you saw Stanley did. She kind of stepped back, looked and said, oh, wait a minute. I think I need to add a couple more over there. Um, you know, even if you let it dry, you make a mistake. I mean, canvas and acrylics is very forgiving. You can go back in and, and retouch things, which is great. Any other tips and tricks, Miss Sandy? Uh, I'm thinking. Uh oh. You cut. No, you covered. Good. Okay, Mostly good. Everything. I'm glad. And then I don't want to instruct these paintings. I always encourage, you know what? You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. If you want to mix it up a little bit and do a big tulip in the middle of the canvas, it's your painting. You want to do that? That's great. I've had people completely paint differently, which is fine. If you just want to watch our show and you want to change it up a little bit and do the sky, add some pinks and stuff to it, feel free to do that. This is your time to be creative. Um, take advantage of that, because I think as we get older and, and adults, we are afraid to color outside the lanes. Everything has to be completely perfect in a certain way and in a certain space. And I love to see the kids that come paint with us because they do think outside the box. They take risks and chances and stuff. And you know what? You can do that with art, which is awesome. Yep, I love see. I love when we do our paint nights and then people go and do their own thing and, and surprise us. And yeah. I'm like, and they give me ideas. Yeah. Even the kids give me ideas. That I, I learn from the kids. I right. Do. And I, it's awesome. Because their great. brain isn't filled, filled oh, yeah, up with lots great. of yucky stuff they, yet. And they get, tell me what they want to do, and I'll go, you know, help and get them the supplies for the following week, and they just do their own thing. Do you want to add a little bit of orange? So show them how you do orange by the mm -hmm. yellow and the red, maybe, mixing a little yep. bit? Because I feel like the yellow is a little bit flat. So if you think if you add a little bit of orange to your yellows, maybe. Oh, to my yellows, okay. Yeah. Yep. So um, if you step back a little bit, maybe you can see. Okay. <laughs> see how that one in the middle? a little like I feel like you yeah, need to add okay. a little orange or something to it for dimension. Okay so orange we are using what colors? Red and yellow. Okay so that's how you're going to mix your orange. So the nice thing is we can get all the colors with just our primaries which I don't usually do so this is new for me. Um, we're trying to keep it simple for these classes but so now I have a nice orange. I can add more yellow if I want it to be brighter or more fire. 
So I'm just adding a little orange like Tracy suggested to the yellow just to give it a little bit dimension here. So see what a difference it makes when you add another yeah, color. Yeah, definitely. I want to even play. In. Yeah, and then you can even add a bunch of different colors. I mean, I love seeing the rainbow assortment sometimes of the tulips. They get the yellows with the oranges in there. Some have a little bit of red. It's like taking a bunch of starbursts and squishing them all together. That sounds good. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I love starbursts or skittles. Okay, so what Taste color? I'm going to do orange, straight on orange now. Yeah, that would be good. But as you see, they pop more by adding just even um, what you could do after, too, is even add little white highlights to some of them, too, to give it a little bit more dimension. Okay, orange. So the question is, will Sandy and Tracy run out of things to talk about for five episodes? Uh, never. No. Never. 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 I wonder what we'll be talking about on episode five. I'm afraid to know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'll come up with some fun facts. So my thought is for each painting, um, depending on what we paint, I would like to have, not like to have, but I plan to have either some fun facts or some trivia and stuff, um, you know, about that painting example. So um, also, yes, if you are part of Facebook, um, please like Brushstrokes Art Studio. Um, we always love to have new members come on there. Um, and also, if you guys have any suggestions, if you're watching this, on possible some paintings that you'd like to see. Um, we do have a bunch on our website. Yeah, if you guys want to you know, yep. do that, definitely reach out to us and say, hey, I'd love blah, blah, blah painting. Um, you know, because this could bring us into some of the holiday months, whether it be um, Halloween or Christmas and different... Um, yeah, which we'll try to do. We'll try yeah, to pick ones do that kind are of during obviously the seasonal. seasonal yeah. We know this isn't really springtime, but we thought this was kind of fun, nice introduction of a painting. Um, but also keep in mind, too, some of them we do transfer canvases. Um, so when you look at the paintings, think about um, the depth of them. So, but yeah, any questions, feel free to go to Brush Oaks Art Studio on Facebook. Um, feel free to um, reach out and um, contact Sandy if you have any questions. Our information, we're always happy to help, and we love feedback or suggestions. Or also let us know how you think the um, video went. We'd love to know if you, if you have any um, tips for us. We're open to suggestions. Those look beautiful, So Sandy. I'm thinking of red. Sure, right. Straight on yeah, red. Yeah, why not? Yep. I do red and then add a little bit of white for highlight to it, just so it gives dimension. But yeah, definitely. I had one person actually do all red tulips when I did it. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. I'm sure they're all pretty. So this I is like great this too. Yeah, because then you can, for if you end up hanging it in your home or wherever you live or giving it as a gift, you can customize it, which is awesome about these paintings. So you can always customize it any way you want. I had one um, customer that always come to my paint events and she would always put a hidden butterfly in every one of her paintings. So um, each time she painted, no matter what it was, whether it was a landscape or it was a... Um, I don't know, animal scene or whatever, she'd always incorporate some kind of little butterfly into each painting. So it was like her little trademark in there of each one. I want, I need a trademark. I, you better get on that. It's been how well, long now? Maybe it could be rainbows. Oh, no, rainbows. I need a trademark. That's, that's, a, that's kind of a big trademark. Yeah. You have rainbows happening right now. I do. Um, yeah. But you got to have something be subtle enough, though it doesn't like totally stand out, though. Unless you did like a rainbow, not mm -hmm. all of colors. I know? need time to think about that. Okay. So this originally started to, uh, we originally were doing this uh, for the senior community, which I thought was, I was so excited when they called me to do this because I think it's huge and it's such a great idea because I know how important it is to paint, especially during now um, with the whole quarantine and how everyone's just struggling. So um, for me, and I know most people, this is definitely an outlet, a therapeutic outlet to um, stay healthy, mind and soul. So um, I was so excited to do this, but this is also, um, since it's going to be aired on um, the Tewksbury channel, anyone can view it. So that even makes me happier that um, anyone can participate and paint yeah. and take advantage because this is, uh, do it with I love kids. painting yeah. and yeah it's such an outlet and everyone everyone needs it and you know honestly for people that don't even paint I've been doing this for eight years um, 
people come in here and they don't paint and they don't think they can and they don't think they even like it. I've even had men come to the paint parties and they've left with big smiles on their faces telling me how fun it was and they're coming again. So even when your child or your husband or even, I've had women too say, oh, I wouldn't like that. I can't do it. Just try it. I can't draw a stick Just try figure. it. It's fun. Yeah. And it's really fun when someone's instructing and you have a good instructor and it actually comes out good and you're like, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. And it just or do put, it as a family thing because a lot of the family events you can't really do much anymore. Or right. you know what? You don't want to have paint in your house. Go outside at the picnic table. Put down a plastic tablecloth from the dollar store. Grab, you know what? Everyone's buying from Amazon right now. I think people have lots of cardboard boxes you don't need to have a canvas you can use a big um, a car part of a cardboard box use that as your canvas if you don't have anything or you have a family of multiple exactly. people and just yeah, use that creative. and just yep. paint right on the canvas on the cardboard box um, and just you know use this as an instruction or guidelines and maybe that's a family event or you can take um, we've done multiple um, events where mommy and me classes and stuff so you know the mommy would paint one side and then the, the child would paint the other you can put two different canvases or pieces of cardboard next to each other do a whole array of different ones um, there's so many options yeah so definitely try it even if you think you so don't Sandy, like those it. look great so we're done with this. So we probably we should, yeah. yes. All right, so we're done with this. So you got all your probably tulips and colors. Probably want to clean up colors. our brush. Yep. And then we're going to do some stems. Okay. All right, pretty. All right, so Tracy's going to take over. So yeah, so I'm going to, um, so you have all these different stems down here on the bottom. So I have this brush here. And what I did is if you only have the bigger brush and another brush, I'm actually kind of making it very smooth and kind of flat here. And what I'm going to do is we have to get our green again. And so we have the green here for the stems. So you have it nice and flat. And I'm going to mix my green. So once again, I'm going to take the yellow. Oh, I'll mix it on here. Yellow and the blue. And we're going to get a nice dark green. So definitely more blue. Just going to mix it on here. So I have it nice and nice and skinny here, and I'm just going to take the side of it, and I'm just going to go straight down. So I'm actually just going to pick this up and hold this for a second. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go straight down, and I'm just kind of going wherever they are, and I'm doing quick little stems. Okay, so I'm going here, I'm going straight down. So it's just a quick motion like this. Quick, quick, quick. Don't overthink it. And I say that for a reason, because a lot of people are like, I can't do it, I can't do it. Overthink, don't overthink it. So this one could just kind of go behind here. This one can come this way. This one can come straight down. So there is a little bit of overlapping that's happening. So very, very simple, very, very quick. You have your dark green, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the dark green on there, dip it in my white. So now I have a white and the green, and I'm gonna go back over those lines slightly. So you get a little bit of a highlight. Okay, dip it in my white, in my green. wherever those stems are. Do you know what the purple tulips signify? I do not know that. Do you, it's loyalty. Oh, all right, I'll send you some purple tulips. Yep. So I think that's it. I think that's the painting, correct, Sandy? I don't think we oh, have to add done? anything else. I speedy it's like that. So yeah, so just really simple. Um, we just added the, the darker colors. green and then the, the little bit of the white. Um, if you want to go back and tweak, oh, actually, you could do mm, this, too, pretty. if you wanted to, to add one other thing, and we'll fix that up. So we can take that pointy brush again, a little bit of white. I like to wipe it off on my brush, so it's more of a dry brush, so you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. You could actually add, go back in and add a little bit of highlight just on each of the paintings here, just a little bit, a little bit of highlight. I always do it on one side. Do a little bit of white. I wipe it off on my brush. Just do a little bit of a highlight. Give it a little bit more dimension on each one of them. And there you go. And that's it, my friends. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm Tracy. And this is Sandy. And we and hope to see you, you guys for again joining in the next us. series. We're very excited. And I'm I'm excited to think of what the next one's going to be. Yeah. I, I have some pulled and I just wasn't prepared. That's okay. Uh, and so just like us on Facebook or any questions, we're yeah. there to help you out. And yeah. you can see, uh, and all, you'll the, see it advertised. all the fun stuff that we used to do and we hope to be doing in the future. And you can call me with any questions you might have, 508-572-0853.
Brush there you Strokes go. Art Studio. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you again next time. And we promise we won't fight or bicker. Peace out. No. <laughs>